Namaste. Welcome to Chitti Media. My name is Abhishek Nayapati and I will be your host. Today's conversation is about the true history of Sikhi and its Dharmic roots. So to talk about this uh, topic today, I have with me Mr. Puneet Sahaniji. Welcome to the show, Puneet. Namaste Abhishek, Jema Bharti. Thank you for inviting me and I'm sorry it took so long for us to make this happen, but very happy to be here. I know, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you for making it. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, so the first thing is, do you want to give a little bit about yourself, a little intro to, to who you are? Well, it's actually a very interesting question. You know, I'm just like a Sikh, which is basically seeking out the truth and trying to speak. That's how I do it. Did quite an interest, interesting life, uh, tried many other things. And if you come to my library, there are, of course, some books on Sikhism, but actually you'll see more on law, economics, mythology and everything. So I was like, you know, very happy with my life, not getting into politics. Tell these thugs, you know, they assaulted our tricolor. And at that time, I was like, okay, like, you know, I have to come out and, you know, speak. And then it just took a life of its own, you know, like one thing led to another and, you know, it got to interviews and became popular. Then, you know, taking on the SGPC and setting the narrative right. And I used to run actually uh, a grassroots movement is, was called Seva. I was the main coordinator of that. It was called, it stood for Six for Enlightenment Values Association. And in no time, it actually became like the most credible and, you know, most informative and in a way also one of the most followed handles on Twitter, presenting Punjab and Sikh history. It had more followers than, for example, SGPC, which was like the Sikh Catholic Church, right? And yeah, and when we present, they never had a counter to us. So, you know, we were doing it now by mass reporting the suspended Seva, but I'm still in the field and, you know, and this is my second time to your platform. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad. I mean, we all have unique ways how we, you know, end up on the path that we end up on. So that's, it's nice to hear your story. So um, let's get into the topic a little bit. So first question, is it true that Sikhi has its roots in Sanatana Dharma? Yes, but uh, absolutely yes. But there are two things, right? So we get stuck in uh, two things. One is, uh, like, we, we are not enough in the present. That's how I understand it. And the second is, you know, we focus too much on definitions and not the functions, right? So when we meet Sanatana, Sanatana means timeless, right? And the timeless is two aspects, right? So what makes it timeless? Anybody can claim they are timeless, right? Everybody in a way claims it. But how we are timeless in a way is not just like we are a continuous civilization. But, you know, we focus on the human psyche, right? And the psyche of human beings stays the same, right? So you can have very different surroundings. So... The human psyche stayed 10,000 years ago was the same and would be the same 10,000 years after. And there is no dogma that we are looking for kind of like a perfection or, you know, like the communist looking in the future. We are rooted in the individual, right? And so we don't have dogma. And actually, it's a very fascinating thing to, you know, like, it's not really a digression, but it's a very important point that, you know, somebody very important pointed to me. So you see, we are one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Further, we have one of the richest languages in the world with so many languages. In none of the Indian languages, and I'm very careful to say this, in none of the Indian languages, despite, you know, and we were not some isolated uh, archipelago or something, we had trade going on all over the world. In none of our languages, there is a word for believer. So mm -hmm. we don't have the, we don't have Jigyasu, oh sorry, we don't have the word Bharosu or Vishwasi, right? We don't have, okay, testify this and you become a believer. So all the words that we have in our language, so for example, Abhyasi, which means a practitioner. Jigyasu means a curious. You have Shravak, somebody who's perfecting listening, or a Sikh, a student. It's a personal individual journey. So there is no concept of dogma, right? So this is the first, this is what makes us eternal because the focus is on the individual. And that is also the reason we are, for example, the Hindus and Sanatis in world, we are able to accept democracy as well because democracy focuses on this focuses on the individual, not on the tribe. Right. So that is the first. So in the present. And the second is, you know, definition. So Sikh by definition, if you go by gurus, of course, they are Sanatanis, and for the first 400 years, 500 years of our history, we were Sanatanis. But in the last 100 years, when it has been Abramized, I think we are much more close closer to Taliban than Sanatan. So you can have phases. You know, where you start somewhere and you're not there. And it's actually true even with Christianity. You know, they started with a belief-based uh, thing. 
but now both of us live in america you know nobody says you know testify and become a christian it's it's a personal journey what you want to be so in a way how i see christianity especially in the west it has become dharmic because there is space to question there is no dogma you know like uh, it is a personal journey so it is a dharmic and you can have the reverse too you can start as a dharmic like sikhism but you can become abrahamic and now we are a cult so i think it's to important to focus what we mean and where we are so your question certainly sikhis roots are in dharmic but the question is where it is now and now i think it's on a journey to become closer and closer to taliban and farther and farther from sanatan dharma okay so uh, thank you for sharing that answer um so now let's get into it so obviously it has its roots in uh, sanatan dharma can you explain uh what is unique about guru nanak ji and guru gobind singh ji so again you know like if you look at the g- galaxy of stars in india you know we have just people excel in different endeavors and we have communities which have excel in different endeavors in india so it's not like for example but it's just like in terms of spiritual masters we have no competition in the world right but even i would say like guru nanak and guru gobind singh you know as sikhism as a world uh, as a tradition is really able to distinguish itself right so first they are synthesizers they are travelers and they are innovators right so if you look at for example guru nanak so first uh, you know he's in, so he's synthesizing his tradition right so he's it, there is a lot of vaishnavism which is bhakti right so basically bhakti movement is another name for vaishnavism and at the time you know like this nath movement is actually very very strong in punjab and you know northern parts of india actually even if you look at the this muslim songs even in pakistan punjabi now they they might know what they are singing but for example he ranja or jugni it basically is making references to the nath tradition which was once upon a time so powerful so guru nanak is actually combining and then again you know he is talking about practical spirituality that actually other bhakti saints talked about as well you know he lays emphasis on having a family and you know being a part of this world not rejecting it but what is most fascinating is you know so he accepts all he says uh, uh, somewhere you know che ghar che ob che obdesh gurgur eko rupanik some something really like i'm forgetting the exact verse so basically there are six schools of you know uh, darshan in hindu philosophy mm. and he says there are six schools they are all true you know so the, there are different ways but they are all the same gurgur rupo uh, uh, they are different but they are all lead to the same so he accepts all but in a way what he is he is not just like you know as a master he's he's a seeker himself so for most of his life he is going on this travels all across india and that's really distinguishes himself because you know the only other person that you can find in indian you know sky is kind of adi shankara right but he's making trips of india what guru nanak is doing is going beyond the borders of you know bharatwarsh and he's going everywhere actually as a student so if you see his conversation he is not going you know this khalistani's way want to make anything as a prophet and you know like you know he is my daddy strongest kind of a thing but he is approaching everywhere as a humble student he is a seek himself and he is there to learn and if i can summarize his philosophy is you know he is like whichever tradition you are part of right it has some rituals which have become meaningless you are just doing it it has lost the meaning drop it and wherever you travel elsewhere there is a culture and they are getting something right and you learn it and incorporate it in your life and if you look at it that it is the most timeless philosophy it is the most relevant philosophy whether we are living in america or canada or in australia or this so you know and his again you know his poetry is amazing so this is you know if you look at uh, guru gobind singh you know so that moves from uh, bhakt to sadak from vaishnav to shark and actually i have given a talk that you know and made a thread also that went pretty viral and you know it, it's it's a topic unto itself but you know so and it's normal right so bhakti is of vishnu because vishnu basically forgoes his own desires and fulfill yours so you know you can do it so the early gurus are focused on that and the dharam yud is always fought through the help of devi that is also a completely hindu idea and if you look at all people whether it's the gorkhas whether it's the rajputs whether it's the marathas they all are shak- shakti bhav they are all devi bhaks so that's why guru gobind singh does but what is really fascinating is uh, abhishek that others have not looked so you know two example so guru is not just doing he's giving trying to unite all these different traditions in india 
to give you an example when this mogal power starts crumbling right and in delhi you know like this mogal throne so there are people coming from different parts of india to play the throne right so in this area of course you know they are also like the rohilas but the main like hindu powers are what the jats they are the rajputs and they are the marathas right yeah. now you look at all three they all look at each other as different people so for example marathas and rajputs of course you know shivaji himself is a bosle and you know uh, his some his genealogy says he went from sisodia but the rajput see himself as okay this guy is different but you see guru gobind singh because he gives a spiritual undergrounding to it you find six in maratha you find six in rajputs you find six in jats so you know he is able to combine this different thing and you know he is trying to you know innovate in a way and you know again you know what it, it, we can go on to it like you know i have also given a talk on his devi puja and synthesize all together so that again is brilliant and you know like they have just made him a caricature of like fighting and everything so if you look at the valor of uh, what do you say maharana pratap is so great and guru is himself inspired by that and in terms of the area captured the sikhs are nowhere compared to the marathas you know the maratha but what he has done in terms of spiritually doing it to give a dharmic undergrounding where all different great cultures can combine that i think is his uniqueness and that is not appreciated because that goes against the khalistani mode because that makes him a pan indian you know like figure and something we all have to do you know because we all all have to integrate whether it's vaishna whether it's shay whether it's shakt whether it's uh, ganpatte whether it's uh, uh, kartike all these different traditions he was trying to integrate that sounds actually a lot like um if you go back to the rigveda when uh, the battle of the 10 kings happened it it sounds very similar to what king sudas did but i mean i don't know enough about that maybe maybe you're familiar with it but it's a very dharmic thing to incorporate all the different you know all the different punks into one so i think that that's very interesting uh so thank you for sharing that about uh, about our leaders um so now let's get into why and when do the distortions of uh, of sikhism start happening so they basically start 100 years ago you know and actually Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I'm making you know like I'm not promoting uh, somebody else on your channel, but I actually gave a talk you know how Sikhism was colonized, Abrahamized, and de-Hinduized, right? And that's actually the thesis of my upcoming book. So you know there are people who have done like great work on it, and they actually combine. And my understanding is, and what British did, for example, they came to this land you know which was like their crown jewel, and they had to rule it. And how do they rule it? And why the British was it's not just like they have to rule India. they were ruling the entire world you know the sun never set mm-hmm. so they find you know amongst and against the sikhs like a particular uh, community that they can do and it was mainly the jat to give you a figure in sec- first world war it was 1.5 million and in second world war they recruited you know like from the sikh army is uh, 2.5 million that is 25 lakh 25 lakh now to give you a perspective today i'm talking today right in today's time when india has one of the biggest armies if you combine navy army air force all three and you combine the reserve forces as well then you reach a figure something of that sort but the british recruited so many of them and 20% of them were sikhs and they were mostly actually jat sikhs and they were not taking you know and now they are celebrating that they went to the war and fought oh bhai they didn't just want they took them to china to rule over china these people so you know the, the british had to and how do they say we like don't fight for your country fight for us so they of course they had to create it so at that time they started you know writing sikh history and telling them no 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 this is like uh, this is filth polytheism and monotheism is a great thing and you are actually better off and you know like we will do it to give you a very fascinating example you know even this khalistani like there is a region called maja right so uh, the amritsar in india where the golden temple is and uh, what do you say lahore you know the main city of uh, pakistan they are both part of maja they were all this one region of punjab and if you see gurus mainly come from there and you know all this like uh, when uh, militancy happened in uh, khalistan it was also restricted in the maja region and the most important six shrines are there in maja region so if there is one cradle you can say of six you know it's basically the maja region okay now 
and you know i have also shown data like most of this militants like uh, almost 100% of the leaders and 80% of the recruits of this khalistani terrorists were jatsiks okay so when british come they again you know they are doing their senses and you know trying to separate hindus and sikhs so when they went in 1881 please notice right so they asked just jat sikhs in this maja region whether you are hindu or whether you are sikh and they didn't understand what the question is like for example i asked a or b and you say i don't know what do you mean by a or b like no answer a or b so somebody will answer a somebody would answer b right and overall they would be equal so 90% of the jats were non muslim and you got almost equal 40% said they were hindus and 50% said they were sikhs you know they didn't understand the question but in 1921 you know after they had recruited for the first world war and you know they were doing this so the muslims remained 10% the jats some in maja but amongst the non non muslim the 90% 80% said they were sikhs and 10% said they were hindus so i am saying in 1881 1881 means 200 year period of gurus 100 year periods of rebellion 50 year period of sikh empire of maharaja ranjit singh in that 350 period they this they, they they had no confusion they were hindu sikhs you know almost equal equal but few years of british that made them into jat sikhs which were not hindus and you will be so surprised in you know like again you know this is a topic unto itself not taking too much of your time so what to separate you know like the british they were like no you have to if you want to join the british army you have to wear the five k's and you know and if you join and if you like don't keep the five k's we are going to fire you like what it's a professional army as long as you are a soldier and you are fighting what is your problem but they had to separate and you know these people are so clever you would be surprised in early 1900s in india they are saying no 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 you can't be a sikh without this five k's but when the sikhs went to uk abhishek you would not believe to me actually bernard cohen is a thing you know he did this great research and you can see how see mm-hmm. he basically you know and uh, there is the court ke sagar until 1979 forget about others army they would not allow a sikh bus conductor you know he is in a bu- he is sitting inside a bus to wear a turban is like no 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 you have to wear a uniform this turban is against uniform wear a helmet or what and forget this a sikh student in a school you know in a private school they said our understanding of uniform is blazer should be highest there should be nothing above the blazer so you are wearing a turban above the blazer remove your turban and these things went to the courts and the courts you know uh, 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 decided against the sikhs and then it became a controversy for many many years and till it went to the parliament and maybe i think you know in house of lords or something they passed it but i'm saying till you know few decades ago these people would not allow sikh children to wear turban in school and 100 years ago in india they are saying you have to wear a turban if you don't wear a turban you are not a sikh and you leave the army so it was all a british ploy and they don't understand and you know they the british have given them a certain idea and they have said this is a center and you know they this just like you know they have no idea what the gurus have said what their history is and these lunatics are running around and you know they have captured the uh, religious institutions and this religious institution you know present you know they are also mentally bankrupt so this is the situation it's very sad wow so i mean that that's actually it's crazy to see where we are today that even just maybe 100 years ago it was we saw you know hindus and sikhs as the same people so i mean that that's that's incredible um so actually uh what can you say about um what so let's speak specifically about what are some of the most crucial and outrageous frauds that have are pieces of misinformation that you've uncovered in your research okay. there are too many you know like i don't know this will take up like entire but for example you know recently there was diwali and you know sgpc yeah. was saying you know it's some bandi chhod divas and you know and it would have been a and i just like demolished their case i showed the letter of the gurus you know like a co- a correspondence of what how the gurus wife is you know guiding them they always celebrated diwali there is no mention of bandi chhod divas or something any like that you know they show like you know the golden temple has been destroyed and you know by this afghan invaders and you know they said death mm-hmm. but you know they say no we have to celebrate diwali there and they show like the one of the greatest martyrs he was like 90 something he was chopped joint by joint what was his sin he wanted to celebrate diwali in amritsar so there is no and you know like but they are saying and then you know i corrected it and it went super viral on twitter and they had no answer to me 
and you know again like i don't know if you are a non sikh you say like one of the most fundamental thing is like for example you have to wear 5k's this 5k's have been brought by the british to basically you know disarm the sikhs because the guru said you have to wear five weapons the guru was not some you know uh, uh, character from a punjabi movie he just wakes up and just says whatever he wants he's creating a army he's going to take talk sensible things what is this you know like wear a, a, a bracelet or what is a wear a comb or something like that he said wear five weapons and you know so they had to disarm the sikhs and they had to separate with the hindus you know make a separate act. so they created the five k's i have given a talk with uh, kushal mehra you know like it's called five k's uh, guru's order or a british concoction with you know very careful references and unimpeachable evidence i have basically proven the case so this is what they have done so five there is no basis of five k's and sgpc says 5k base center if you read like uh, everything they say you know like you are not a proper sikh without 5k this is what you have to do sgpc has disenfranchised people on basis of 5k it is a complete fraud it has no basis then again you know like this modern sikhism what you say you know we talked it has nothing to do with guru nanak and guru gobind singh they were two like the biggest frauds were like they were two characters one way is bhai veer singh and bhai kam singh nava and maybe we will finish them you know like again you know because just one person you know you, we you start and it's not gonna, so bhai veer singh you know he basically uh, uh, comes up with this so he is actually when the first time the indian award of letters you know like sahitya academy awards the highest literary award is instituted he is the first person to get it there are bhai veer singh sadan everywhere and everything. so you know one of the you can say the most important historical work of sikh history is basically It's called Prachin Pant Prakash by Ratan Ratan Singh Bhangu. It was written in the hundred year period between the uh, death of the tenth Guru and the coming of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. It's like a ninety year period, and that period is utter chaos. You know, invasions, fight, and something. But you know, that book is the most important to get an idea of that. Period. In that book, there is no difference between Hindu and Sikh. So you know, for example, he says, "Ki uh, gende." तुम खाल से हो हिंदू धर्म पंथ नानक को छत्री का सो ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो लाइक राजा जाना एंड सो वट वीर सिंह डज इज ही चेंजेस वेर एवर ही सेज हिंदूज ही रिप्लेस इट विद सिख ही रिप्लेस विद खालसा सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेर इट्स राजा जनक ही मेक्स इट सतगुरु नानक सो इट्स कंप्लीट यू नो सो हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड ऑफ फ्रॉड्स दिस गाय हैज कमिटेड ऑन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्टोरिकल डॉक्यूमेंट ऑफ सिख्स i don't know if anything is more historically important and this guy got sahitya and you know he is still worshiped everywhere and this guy has made like sikh hanity and you know i have to tell you this guy was such a despicable person this guy used to live in uh, one kilometer or one mile of golden temple when this jallianwala bagh massacre happened right and this was such an outrage that you know uh, winston churchill he Sorry, Winston Churchill, sitting in America, you know, who thought of us as beastly people with beastly religion, he thought this was the biggest blot on the British Empire. This, uh, the what this Jalian Wala Bagh has happened. Do you know, by Veer Singh, who is sitting there, one he he lived for forty years after, he never said one word against it. He actually used to run a newspaper called Khalsa Samachar. Just yesterday, I was talking to a very very reputed, very famous professor. now he is retired of uh, uh, the premier university of punjab it's guru nanak dev university and in our private conversation he said i saw your talk it was very fascinating don't take my name i don't want these zombies after me but he said you know when i was a professor i actually went through all the archives of veer singh of that year 1919 when this jallianwala bagh massacre happened and he said in the entire archives forget him he didn't allow anybody else to even write a column that jallianwala bagh has happened so when this incident is covered it's only the british putting their reports their version so he's only and this guy is you know whatever he's basically the father of modern sikhism whatever we follow is by by veer singh and it's not you know he has ideas i disagree with he has committed hundreds of frauds on the most important sikh document and he has nothing to say on the jinnyamala bang massacre this is the character of these people now the second person who has done this by bhai kam singh naba you know and he has done the same thing you know so for example he plucked out a statement so of course you know guru gobind singh ji has basically trying to synthesize all this but from what you get from is he is basically a shakt you know so mm-hmm. in a shakt you know there is a line in one of his composition and it's called krishna avatar 
So Krishna Avatar is actually in his Dasam Granth is 15% of the. It's beautiful, you know. It's a, you just listen to it, it's amazing. But in Krishna Avatar, in one place he says, "Maina Ganesha Pratham Manau Krishna Vishnu Kabhunatyam." Now what he is saying is the, the uh, translated it is, I do not invoke Ganesha first, and I do not meditate upon Vishnus, right? And he said, "Look at this." This shows that you know we we Sikhs are not Hindus and we don't believe in anything and and you know this has been repeated by ad nauseum by anybody because nobody reads and you know this is not by you know there was the Pantratan Gyani Maskin you know one of their biggest you can say like uh, preachers or whatever he was speaking this nonsense now just other day you know I've given a talk on Diwali you can do I've just exposed it's complete lies so if you take this line for example this subsection start with iti Devi ji ki ustati you know like From here we begin the invocation of the Devi, and this composition oh, and we wow. iti Devi ji ki ustati samapti ki we finish the ustati of you know Devi, and the immediate lines above it are that Devi killed Shumanishum. Of course we know this from Mark and Deepuran. It's Devi yeah, yeah. who basically manifests as Ram and kills the dust grief means ten neck one means Ram. It's Devi who manifests as Krishna and you know takes the kans by his hair and uh, you know vanquishes him. So what? This composition is saying that we are shakt, so we do not invoke it. Ganesha first means we are we invoke it. They be first, and I found like manuscripts, you know, where they have on this very page, how they have pictureized it. You know, Ganesha is behind and they be is first, and Guru is basically doing a home to they be. So when he says, "Wait, this is what he has said is nothing out of the ordinary." So you pick up Markandeya Puran. This is exactly what they say that you know the they be is the supreme. neither the hari nor the har nor the brahma knows his secrets so where he says devi is the highest and he talks about others they just take this line and say you know he says not about ganesha and vishnu so you know they, this this is the kind of frauds and intellectual dishonesty they have done and they have created a generation of zombies and idiots who have nothing you just need two lines before what he has said and just read where the composition is starting and where the this uh, composition end and there can be nobody who has like two, two neurons working that to understand this is a shakt composition so it's mm-hmm. so you know even if you go to for example mahabharata in the shanti par they they start talk about king like uh, vishnu shastrana then vishnu is the greatest and in the same they talk about uh, 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 shiva and he is the greatest so you know and mm-hmm. this you know you take one line out of context and you can create anything and you know they have just created a generation of idiots and lunatics how have they been able to do that though so cuz that that's the question that comes to my mind is if it just takes a little bit of reading you just got to read read the line before and you have your answer how is it that they i guess people just don't no, read it think is, is, it is this is the biggest you know one hurt for me abhishek i am not jordan peterson or peter thiel or roger scruton or elon musk or something you know i am just like a person okay in new york i have the freedom to speak what i have to do and of course you know i have more intelligence than all these jatwadis combined but you know i feel ashamed to do this that i am bringing out for this lies that have been hidden for a 100 years that anybody can see you know but they have they, they have said we don't know whether this is composition like this dasam gran for it has accepted as guru's work for the first 200 years but again it goes all into like you know this puranas so they have made it uh, controversial and they don't talk about it and they distort it and they don't speak about it and you know uh, this is how it goes they just pluck something here like for example the battle cry or the anthem of sikh was chupaisa right so it is 29 uh, quartins or 28 29 chupa. so sgpc has you know again it was part of the liturgy that you have every evening we sing it and you know if you have to become baptized that is sung at the time of baptism so they couldn't remove it because the tradition was running for 200 years <coughs> what did they do they chopped off the last four quartets why so you read only till 25 what is the 26 quartet kripa karo hum pe jagmata that oh devi oh jagmata bless me but you know like they do they want to hide it so you know again just mistranslation and you know again nothing makes sense that's why you know punjab was like the intellectual super house you know vitality when shivaji maharaj dies you know if you he is talking you know like we have to get sapta sindhu because this is the cradle of our civilization and you see like it's intellectually dead this is what they have created and when i read this general papers on the past 
it is so shocking for me like now it is utter garbage punjab in 60s 70s actually had a very uh, vitality the intellectual output was much better that that was coming in 70s and 80s than it is coming now after this bitnawana and khalistanis and all this you know madman have taken over but again the roots have been set in 1920s when they started aping the muslim okay so actually uh, that's actually a good segue to my next question so so obviously we could talk about the distortions for like hours you know there's there's been so many distortions but let's speak specifically about the abrahamization if for lack of a better word how has sikhi been abraham abrahamic uh you know has it been portrayed to be a little bit more abrahamic if you can speak about that no you, you see uh, abhishek from where we started you know this started you know we don't have a word for believer Sikh means a student. It's an individual journey. You are student, but they define it as a believer. Like if you are a Sikh in 1925, you know actually it's a very uh, fascinating how the Hindus and I don't know how you say Hindus and Sikhs because everybody believed in the gurus. You know it's like Shivaji Maharaj, whether it's a Marathi or a Gujarati, everybody believes in Shivaji Maharaj. You know it's these it, uh, lunatics have created separation. But anyways, what you call Hindus of Punjab now, they fought tooth and nail in the Punjab Assembly. that this gurus are ours how can you say we are not sikhs and this happens in punjab assembly a very and if you look at as a dispassionate person with logic the arguments are all against the sgpc this you know this they are all in favor of you know the sahizdaris or the hindus what they are arguing and the british accept that you know that the arguments are in their favor but because the british government in punjab is communicating with the british government at the center and the british government at center is looking at the argument and saying like yeah these people are talking sense and the british government in punjab answer you know you are looking at from a logical perspective of, as a lawyer what we are doing is these people are acting like muslim league you know they block the roads you know they do direct action and you know how how to do do with, with this lunatics so they basically gave it anyway so at the time how sikhism is defined is actually defined worse you know or more strongly than even is in christianity you just say jesus is the son of god in islam hmm. you basically just say you know i testify that muhammad is the uh, messenger of god they define sikhism as you have to believe in 10 gurus you have to believe in guru granth sahib we never had a concept of belief. it was always about knowing it was not about belief and you don't have to believe in other thing and you are not a hindu this is how they have defined right so anyways which is the most fascistically defined definition anywhere that i know of so once you have the concept of believer this is my this you automatically have concept of disbeliever kafir infidel because it, then you have automatically concept of apostasy then you automatically have concept of blasphemy and when you do that the intellectual tradition just you know like goes away so if you look at when they for the first 400 years actually to print a book or you know thesis it was a very expensive proposition we didn't have the printing press you know printing press comes to punjab in 1880s but you know you see there is an intellectual flowering there are you know commentaries being written and something and it's amazing now there nothing is written it's just like pamphleteering and uh, you know like uh, polemic is being written so the they the you know and again it's you know it's not the, and they don't become abramized so for example in 1920s again this is nobody has looked and i think this is the biggest blind spot of our history what how they also like the sikhs are basically they copy the muslim league word for word so for example what was the demand of muslim league juda gamana qomir barabar ki qomir translated is juda gamana qomir means separate nation and barabar ki qomir means we are 25% but we want 50% share right you look at akalis or you know the sikh communalists in punjab that was exactly their thing so the guru for example never uses the word qom for six evil months they use the word panth you know because panth means a path and panth means you know there are different paths it's okay but they started using the word qom for sikh copying muslim name now if you go to gurdwara people don't know where this come but you know now everybody says qom 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 is mean nation means you are a separate nation then also this muslim league was the other nation which is the hindu it's going to swallow us this is again the uh, what the what do you say assertion of the sikh communalists this akalis and sgpc then they say because we are in minority and the majority wants to swallow us we have to express ourselves not democratically but through street power so direct action block this and you know like criminality and gangster politics what ambedkar has said this is what they have been doing so ambedkar said you know muslim league indulges in gangster politics 
they make outrageous demands they indulge in violence when there is counter reaction they play victim and they you know again this this is if you look from the 1980s from this kharistan movement even before the 1960s like this punjab this is exactly what they are doing so they have not just taken the abrahamic concepts which are completely antithetical and intellectually uh, suicidal but even their politics is exactly like muslim league you know do communist uh, would you say separate nationhood and you know we we are nations in conflict and the other nations want to swallow us and we have to assert us we kept doing it and they have destroyed the industry they have destroyed the intellectual thing and you know it's very sad we are happening you know we were we were the crowns of india and now uh, I, we are just actually living on reputation by the of the gurus and you know like of the other communities which are prosperous of punjab but uh, they they have really destroyed and i don't think we have like much future left like punjab everybody wants to escape out we have drugs we have conversion so they have destroyed one of the uh, uh, proudest and greatest civilization oh man that's sad to hear um but let's talk a little bit about it um this the dismantling of sikh scholarship uh do you want to expand on that you, a little bit it's, you know it is so sad you know what is happening you know like again i told you in 60 70 so one guy his name is pyar singh you know and he wrote a brilliant book it's it is uh, you know gatha adgrat and you know he he basically found you know how guru granth sahib evolved it was not one copy you know because and he did a textual scholarship for example the letter ch you know so it was written differently at different period in time so based on a manuscript how ch was written you can say this one came earlier or this one came after so anyways you know he wrote this and sgpc doesn't have anything you know so this guy was 80 something he was a professor very uh, revered professor of gurunanak dev university which is a premier university of punjab sgpc said you have committed blasphemy and he said what what have i done and he said no no we can't tell you what you have done but you have committed blasphemy and he said okay but what should i do is like you go and you know like uh, clean shoes or something he's like okay i'm a sikh if you say it i'm i'm going to do it and he is a revered professor 80 year old something and he's clean he's like but at least tell me what you've done he's nothing and actually there is an india today article i think is 1993 if i'm not wrong you just do pr sing india today and something what sgpc done is like they banned his book and they said you know take his book and put it on a pyre and burn it this is their intellectual level and they say you they we are representing gurus or you know to be a sikh or whatever they said burn this book and it is a great book and that guy died a broken man now for example if you ask look at me there are two people that i kind of look up to you know and they and they had very short careers of a few years they were basically thrown out because they were honest and you know they were doing innovative research one was harjot obray and other was was jeevan deo so they have few now they they left in the 90s they have you know like harjot obray produced like the most uh, uh, timeless book the most important book is uh, construction of religious boundary in 1984 he didn't publish a book after that there recently something has come out but i think it's just like uh, getting his pa- previous papers together and putting it together but anyways so for a generation he has not published and that guy you know somebody just pointed to me you know he was talking to a colleague and you know somebody wrote a chapter that guy was actually in 1984 in delhi and he had to face this pogrom and you know he had to hide his family and when he talks about it he compares his harassment by this khalistanis and sjpc and you know this jatwadi and this lunatics as the same he felt when you know he was he compares this two experience when he was uh, running for his life when six were being hunted in delhi so this is what they do to scholarship the other was jeevan deol you know he also did brilliant work for a few years he has left anyways these guys have left the field for more than a generation but after i you know started doing this thing people who are connected to them personally you know and they were like okay what you are doing is brilliant and you know like you should get in touch they tried to introduce me to these two great people and i never imagined this will happen you know like i always look, i never wrote an email to them because i was like you know uh, but i was like okay maybe i have arrived you know their colleagues are saying you should you know like talk to them and i said and you know of course was, and these people it was so sad how they answered me they said we have done what we have to do we have to do, do nothing i'm sorry we can't help you and i'm just like man i just want to talk to you as a person you know just, but these people have been so i i don't know what this what trauma these people have gone through yeah you know they 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 just d- destroyed and you know i can go out for example you know last thing you know there was uh, one girl you know i think uh, amisha she translated one it's actually a very good you know so uh, before shastra puja you know like before shastra do shastra puja there was an invocation of devi and it used to be part of the sangrad ugradanti it's beautiful it's a tantric uh, composition you know 
and it's just six uh, six verses and she translated it right and she uh, ammi shah what she does is you know she like tries to apologize you know i'm not saying yes six are different blah blah you know like tries to appease everything but then she translates honestly what is written now after that you know she went to the top program in six studies which in university of california santa barbara and she did her phd under which was a top professor which was uh, gurinder singh man and her phd thesis was written that person should be like at least an associate professor now do you know she is in hiding she doesn't want to share her paper so for example i wrote to her i am interested in reading a paper can you send it to me no answer i send her a reminder no answer then i write to books which have basically you know quoted her paper as a you have a copy we have no copy the conference you know this uh, journal that was publishing of that year they have removed the entries so you can't find it i write to the conference please give me a paper they say we don't have it then i wrote to the head of department they say we, we don't have it so and that person if you see you know she should be she is some instructor in some you know new jersey school and you know she is hiding she doesn't even have a web page there is just some name her name here ammi shah or something but this is nothing i somehow or the other you know because i am a person when i get to it I, i i get to the bottom of it i got the papers anyways and you know i shared with mm-hmm. but this is how a uh, scholars can do a little bit thing and this is what they have to suffer that person she, she is just appeasing all the radicals yes this is what you say is right you see yeah, everything everything but these are just six verse uh, st- uh, verses that i'm going to translate honestly for this is it instead of being like a reputed professor who is celebrated and who has a career she is living as a, in hiding and you know <laughs> sending at i don't know my third rate university she is like an instructor and doesn't have a web page uh, so n- now my next question then is how do we combat these narratives when when you have people that are going to such like extreme lengths to you know intimidate professors and you know how does even the everyday person like you know kind of uh, you know reply to this no it's just basically what we are doing so i think this you know this uh this uh, social media is a godsend you know and uh, like that's how our voice is getting earlier they were i mean you they can't do anything i don't work for any you can't get me fired from a job that's why i'm such a big danger to them so you know like i now i have like about 20000 followers when i had less than 2000 followers you know they have gotten me suspended two times and twitter basically reinstates me back when they have finally a human look at it and they apologize but you'll be surprised you know like i think the third rated like one of the most important republicans you know because she is also like khalistani and you know like from a jad background she was celebrating yes we have got this person bumped off from twitter and i'm like is like really i'm just a guy sitting in new york writing about punjab and sikh history and she was celebrating so you know like this uh, ravi khalsa all these people like all these biggest khalistani with huge family uh, uh, with millions of dollars they they are after me that we have to get this guy but you know again Uh, i am really inspired by this you know i don't know if you know of ex muslim movement if you're not i think you should really invite mm-hmm. them you know we, yeah, we yeah, should yeah, all sure. just yeah. speak the truth and you know wo ke kehte mere seene mein nasi tere seene mein sahi ho kahi bhi aag lekin aag jalni chahiye and we should all you know like have a lamp and fire and try to do it and speak the truth and you know inspire others and speak it and it's so much easier i think this youtube and this uh, thing uh, this is like kind of like a printing press it's a revolution that we all can speak and you know not everybody can read but everybody can listen and now you can directly go to the masses and if you have context it will have it and the good thing about uh, abhishek is if you hear the truth you can never unhear it book you can ban it so for example now i told you that they have removed last four uh, uh, chupais or quartets of chupai sahab which is one of the most important uh, thing now you can never forget it now if a sikh especially you know and it's very uh, hurtful to say this thing like for example i last time i was in india 6 months ago i was for my cousin sister's marriage she is married to a amr amridhari sikh who keeps a five case mm. now to tell them this is a fraud you know just imagine this person has put his life and faith in it 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 is not an easy thing to say but you know i have to speak that to and once you hear this they have done it you can never unhear it so i understand like uh, like you know and and uh, to be honest I, these are just like two or three things i have said there are at least 30 things <laughs> that are inside my heart that maybe someday i will tell them because i think people who are also with me they they, they are not ready to listen to me i see so i mean i guess the truth is maybe there's a way to 
slowly expose the truth is uh, is that i mean i guess that's my question is there a way to expose the truth to handle it i think it's an inspired to seek the truth. this is again like the guru's thing okay. it was again we are not you know this khalistanis want to make them a prophet okay like here is a thing and you know the world ends you know and do it it's not to you give it to them it's an inspired mm-hmm. to seek it that's why we are seeks so it's also a personal journey like uh, the khalistani cannot but you know sometimes i see because you know it's all lies so again you know like i can't verify each and every statement that it there so many things are lying so for example uh, about one year ago i said made a thing and now i realize no 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 actually nobody knows this khalistani would not find out in a 10 years but looking back at myself when i was writing my book i was like actually this point it was not support it is actually there is a lot of it standing on very shaky ground this assertion so we are all learning and it's a process and we all have to go and you know seek the truth and that is about being the seeker I th- yeah, I, I like that. So we all got to be humble. We all we all got to be, we all got to understand that we don't. Yeah, know humble like Guru Nanak, but also like yeah. have the fire of Guru Gobind Singh to you know fight back. Mm-hmm. You know, so humble. That's wonderful. Better warrior. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna I'm gonna share that quote for sure. I like that. <laughs> you know, thank you for your bravery and your courage. And uh, you know, namaste. And to the viewers, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and spread the word. Thank you. जय माता दी बाय नमस्ते वी होप यू एंजॉय दिस चित्ती मीडिया कंटेंट प्लीज रिमेंबर टू सब्सक्राइब टू अस एंड स्विच ऑन द नोटिफिकेशंस फॉर दिस चैनल फॉर आवर अदर सोशल मीडिया लिंक्स मोर कंटेंट एंड टू सपोर्ट आवर वर्क प्लीज विजिट cittii.net धन्यवाद नमस्कार